Hey friends, um, here we are back at the Vernal Pool, but big difference, it's in the daytime. So I thought we could come back here now that it's been um, a couple of weeks and see who we're finding here. So let's do a couple things first off. Let's define what a vernal pool is. So a vernal pool is a temporary body of water. It's typically in a woodland area like you see here, um, at least in New Hampshire and in Vermont. And it is a place that holds water, like we're seeing here, but only in um, a few of the seasons out of the year. There's no stream that runs into this or no river. So it doesn't have a source of water. So when it gets warm enough and things dry up, this vernal pool will dry up as well. Now the fact that it doesn't have a stream or a river is part of what makes this such a cool place. Because it doesn't have a constant source of water, it doesn't have any fish. So this is a really safe place for the friends we met the last time we were out here, um, the salamanders and the frogs, to lay their eggs. Now here's the trick. They have got to develop really quickly before this body of water dries up. So that's pretty much what a vernal pool is. Vernal means springtime, so it's considered a, um, an ephemeral or springtime body of water. Um, and these, these couple of months right now are the times where there's tons of activity here. So um, I wanna take a look at um, who we might find out here with you today. Okay, so um, in order to get a close look at some of the organisms that are really tiny, they're called macro invertebrates. Macro meaning they're big enough to see without a microscope, but that means they're still gonna be super tiny for us out here. And invertebrates. That was the word um, that was the opposite of what we are. We're a vertebrate with the spine back here, like the frog and salamander were. These are invertebrates. That's mostly what we're gonna be finding out here today. And they're really tiny. So here's what I like to do. I like to have a bucket. And it doesn't have to be this big. This just happens to be the size bucket I had. And then I get some small containers, maybe from yogurt or sour cream, that kind of thing. Um, and I like things that have a white background. It makes it easier to see these little organisms. Um, if what you have is something different, no big deal. Just use what you've got. I do find having a net, a little net to be handy. So if you have that, that's great. If not, um, just scooping the bucket into the vernal pool, you're gonna catch a lot of things that way. So here's what I do. I set my things up here so I don't trip over them. And then I walk down to the edge of the water. As I'm walking down, I'm trying to be aware of um, if there are any egg masses, because I don't want to step on those and I don't want to collect those. So I'm just kind of noticing around me because there are some, just a little bit off of um, off the side here to my left. And I take my bucket and I do a scoop. And then I bring it back up to a place where it's nice and flat. And already, just from that scoop, I have things inside of my bucket. But I also have a bucket of water that I can then take my net and um, do some dipping with that. I actually like this spot over here. Um, I kind of like being on this rock. And I do a dip with my net. And when I do that, I've brought up a lot of extra things. Carefully take the leaves out of there. I might check and make sure there's not any kind of a little organism right on there. And I come back to my bucket, which is really close by. I make sure that when I'm doing my um, netting, I'm right near my bucket. And when I get to my bucket, I put my hand under my net, I tip it over, and I give it a little bit of a shake in there. Oh yeah, we've got some things happening in here now. Um, and then I lay the net aside. Take a peek in here with me at just what that one little scoop brought us. So you might notice something down here that looks like a tadpole, but it's a little bit different. That one right down there that's wiggling. It's got a little bit longer of a tail than a tadpole. And notice, just 
on the back side of its head there, it looks like it has this crazy wild hairdo. Um, so that's someone who's a little bit different than a tadpole. Um, so let's remember some of the things that we're noticing about them, okay? So that one has sort of this round bulbous head. Looks like it has a crazy hairdo, bad hair day. I can totally relate. And um, a long, thin body. Let's see what else we know. Oh, check this out. Somebody's moving in here. So let's watch that one for a minute. And a second one right next to it. Maybe you're noticing reaching for the leaves. I mean, these things look like piles of sticks and debris. But in fact, they're actually homes that are built by the larva of a type of fly. And they build their home with the materials that they find in whatever aquatic habitat they're in. At this vernal pool, what they're gonna find a lot of is um, leaves and sticks, uh, maybe some moss, um, maybe some bits like these kind of golden ones down here that um, come off of trees. If they happen to be living in a stream, oh, check that out. Did you see? Right there, you can see it is not just a pile of sticks. You're seeing the larva reaching out and grabbing for some food. So really cool find. We're going to do a little bit of research about that one too. So I'm trying hard to not name everything for you, but notice things about them. Um, something else that I'm noticing in here that is pretty cool, but that's not moving, so you might not be noticing it too much. Oh, it just as I said it, it started to move. This was just moving, and here's another one. I'm going to move a couple things carefully out of the way. And we've got a couple things right here. And what do you notice about those? Again, when I ask you what you notice, some things to think about are color, size, shape, and texture. So that might even be the shape of something that's familiar to you from uh, other trips to a lake or even to the ocean. Okay. Hey friends, as I keep adding to my bucket here, um, we get a few, a few new organisms. Um, a minute ago we were looking at something that looked a little bit like a tadpole, but it was, had a longer, thinner body and it had that crazy hairdo. Um, and I see more of those in here. Let's look right here, you guys. If I drew an imaginary circle here, we have two organisms that are similar, but slightly different looking. So this is the one we've been seeing before with the crazy hairdo, but it's combed back right now. And here's the other one. Do you see how the front part of it, whoops, another one just swam right over you. It doesn't have the crazy hairdo and its body is round or more bulbous. So that's, that is the tadpole. Um, that's the tadpole from the wood frog. Um, and that was the frog that we saw uh, when we visited the vernal pool at night. And the other organism we saw that night, do you remember what it was? It was that great big, like seven or nine inch long, um, big black sp spotted salamander with the yellow spots on it. Anyways, these guys with the crazy hairdo, that's who they are. This is their larval stage. And um, what you're seeing there that looks like the crazy hairdo is its gills. That's how it breathes. Its gills are called external gills. They're on the outside of the body, and that's how they get their oxygen. And before they become the yellow spotted salamander, like we saw a couple weeks ago, they're going to have to change a lot. Um, they're going to need to absorb those gills. They're going to need to develop lungs. They're going to need to grow legs. Um, so it's a, they've got a lot of work to do before this vernal pool dries up. Um, hey, there's a bunch of other stuff in here, too, so let's, let's focus on some other things right now. Let's see what else we can find. Take a look right here, and you might notice that we've got a pretty good-sized snail. And snails are um, common to find in vernal pools as well. I think what I might do, friends, is um, add a few more things and then maybe use my small containers to pull out a couple things to, um, to show you some things in isolation. So, okay. Hey, friends. I am so excited. I, am, I was hoping we would find this, but you never know. So check this out. I'll put it into a smaller, one of my smaller containers that I told you I'd bring. Well, you see our friend the tadpole. But look at this other guy who's in here. This is called a fairy shrimp. 
and fairy shrimp like wood frogs and like spotted salamanders are what scientists call indicator species. That means if we find any of those organisms, it indicates that it might be a vernal pool. Now, wood frogs and spotted salamanders might lay their eggs in other aquatic environments, but fairy shrimp, the only place you're going to find those is in a vernal pool. So, confirmation, we know we're at a vernal pool, and now just look at this amazing little organism. Um, I want to give you a little sense of scale. Well, I guess you can see it's a small small bucket, and there's my finger pointing down here at him. And see all these things waving? Call them like little appendages. They're like little arms or something. And there are, um, if you could count them, 11 on each side. So there are 22 all together. And they're serving a couple of different functions right now. If you remember the crazy hairdo of the spotted salamander from a minute ago, um, and I told you those were the external gills, that's what's happening here with this guy. So those are the external gills. It's how the fairy shrimp is getting oxygen, which it needs to live because it's an animal. Um, but it's doing a couple of other things as well. As it wiggles um, those appendages around, it's moving little bits of debris, um, little broken down bits of leaves and things um, towards its mouth to help it eat. And it also can help it to move. I wonder if it's just kind of bumped up on the side there and not moving, because he was moving a little bit more before. Let's see if he wants to show you a little bit more how he moves. There he goes. Thanks, friend. Um, so super cool. Um, not a lot of people in the world have seen a fairy shrimp, so I'm really glad that you're getting to see one today, and I hope that you get to make it to a vernal pool and find some for yourself in real life, because they're really beautiful color orange. Um, so, hey, there we go. That was, that was a great find. Um, and now you know what an indicator species is, and you know what species of animals indicate that this um, environment is what we would call a vernal pool. All right, here you go guys. Some more, um, more water, more organisms added to the bucket. It's starting to get a little mucky in there, but you know what? The mucky part is a really important part actually of the vernal pool. So the vernal pool being in a woodland area means that when all of the, tr the leaves fall off of the deciduous trees in the winter, they fall into this basin where the snow piles up and melts and rainwater builds up. And so the base of this vernal pool is a ton of decaying leaves. And that's a really important part of the vernal pool. That's what's providing so much nutrient to so many of the organisms that live here. So the fact that my water is getting a little mucky just means it's looking more and more like an actual vernal pool. So you're going to recognize some old friends in here um, that we've already talked a little bit about. Um, we have another snail in here. We have our tadpoles. We have some salamander larvae. We have two other things that I haven't named for you yet um, that we've been looking at. I'll, I'll take those out in a minute and we'll name those for you. But what I want to look at here is look at all, yeah, look at all these things doing all these somersaults just tumbling around. Pretty cool, right? And there's tons of them. So I'm going to tell you what they're going to be because they look nothing like what they're going to be when they are adults. Those are mosquito larva. So it's looking to me like we're going to have a good mosquito year. And there's a really cool thing that they're doing. They have um, an adaptation, a way of uh, breathing, that they take air in through a siphon at the end of their body. So they're coming up to the top and getting some air and then tumbling back down. So I thought this was just kind of a, a fun collection for you to see. And then I want to show you a couple of things close up again, just like we did with the fairy shrimp. Hey friends, so here are the couple things I wanted to show you in this smaller container now. This is one of them, which we've talked a little bit about. And the other one are these little guys that we've talked a little bit about, but we haven't named. And we ended up with another spotted salamander larva who joined the container, um, but you've met him before. So you're probably familiar with this shape, 
right? So um, that is the shape of a clam, and it is in fact a clam. Um, and it's called a fingernail clam. And if you notice, if you, oh, oh, and the other friend that we wanted to meet is sticking his head out again. So let's talk about him and then come back to our clams. So I told you already that this was the larva to a kind of fly, and it's called a caddis fly. Um, but this is just the larva. Oh my goodness, he is really interested in that clam. And he is a pretty hungry character, so he could end up eating someone here. Um, anyways, he's called a log cabin caddis fly because the home that he builds around himself to protect himself is ends up looking a little bit like a log cabin. So it's made, like I said before, from sticks and leaves and debris that are right here in the vernal pool. And I'm going to just nudge him aside so we can take a minute. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pick him up and put him back in the bucket, that big bucket. So we can take a look at these smaller ones. They're called fingernail clams because of how small they are. But this is my pinky fingernail. And you can see that it's even smaller, especially this one, even smaller than that. So it's probably even smaller than your pinky fingernail. Okay, so we'll add fingernail clams to our collection of organisms that we have met today. Um, hey friends, here's another one I've put in a separate little container. And part of the reason I put this one in a container was so that you could see it up close, but also because even when it's small like this, and it's really teeny, it is smaller than the fairy shrimp for sure. Uh, maybe about the size of uh, one of the salamander larvas. Anyways, it is the larva of a really big beetle called a predaceous diving beetle. And maybe from the name of that, you can figure out that the beetle is a big predator. Predaceous um, comes from the word predator. But when it's a larva, it is still a predator. It will eat tadpoles, um, pretty much anything it can find. And... Um, its, it's nickname, other than um, larva of predaceous diving beetle, which is kind of long, is water tiger. So I have him in his own container so that he doesn't um, start snacking on everyone else that we have collected today. It's time to clean up. It's time to make sure that we release all these organisms safely back into the vernal pool and that we aren't taking any um, organisms or even any of the vegetation that might have little organisms on them back with us. So I can rinse my net pretty well right here in the vernal pool and try and get all the leaves off and set that to the side. And I'll do the same thing with my containers. Make sure that there's nothing left in there. All clean. And my big bucket that still has so many of the organisms, I'm going to come right here to the edge of the water and come down low and gently release all of them back in that way. I'm gonna do one more rinse, swish it around. Make sure no one's there. Look at this, even on the outside of my bucket today. So we wanna make sure anytime we go from um, one vernal pool to a stream or a pond that we clean our things off really well so we're not moving organisms from one spot to another or having them in a place where they're not in water anymore. Anyways, this was great fun. I have one more video to share with you um, after this one. But in the meantime, I hope you get out to a vernal pool or a pond or a stream or something maybe um, nearby your house and, um, and see what you can find, see what you notice. Take care, friends. Bye. If you have enjoyed this video, please visit our website to learn more about what we do and consider making a donation.